Welcome to Paul Paul's Workshop. As many of you know, wall space in my shop is critical. And over the last couple of years, I've designed several different projects to be able to maximize that space. And one was using the drill bits on the carousel, and that really worked out well. And another one was the cabinet that gave me four times the storage space on my wall. How would you like to have a cabinet that could give you over eight times the space? That's what I'm designing today. So let's get started. Now in this section, this is where I'm going to put this new cabinet. It's going to be 30 by 60 inches, which is a big cabinet. Now, as I look to the left, there is a drawer. That drawer is full of sandpaper and it's totally disorganized. That's going to go into that cabinet as well, along with a lot of other tools. To begin a project like this, I actually do the old school, paper and pencil. I sketch out my ideas and test it out on paper first. Once that's done, then I'll take it over into a uh, software program. Now in this case, this whole cabinet is all depending on the mechanism for the hinges. And that's what I'm sketching out now. This cabinet did go through many, many different revisions. Even after it was under construction, I changed a lot to be able to make this work and accomplish the goals that I wanted to. So for all the CAD geniuses out there, don't laugh. Paper and pencil still works just fine. Now this is the design that I came up with to be able to manage the hinges in these vertical panels. Now this is half inch material and it is 12 by 14. That way I can get two out of that one sheet of scrap plywood. Now of course because I decided to do this on a 60 inch long cabinet, I'm going to need another set of these. Now you can configure the cabinet any size that you want, but this is going to meet my purpose. Now for this particular design, I'm using a VCAR Pro to be able to design it and be able to cut it out. And really for this, there's only two tool paths. One of them is to cut out the half inch holes, and then the second one is going to be used to cut out the project itself. I'm using an eighth inch straight cut bit to be able to do it. So that way I'll be able to save both tool paths as one file and be able to carve it all at one time. With the basic design concepts done, it's time to go ahead and build the wall cabinet itself. Or you, in other words, let's build a box. Now this is going to be 13 and a quarter inches deep and of course the 30 by 60. The plywood that I'm using is just three quarter inch uh, basic cabinet grade plywood. Now one thing I want you to, to notice is I have a new dust mask. This is by Stealth Mask and I'm going to put a link in the description below. This is a N100. It is a fantastic mask, very comfortable and with my glasses it still makes it very easy to wear. I absolutely love it and highly recommend it. Now I'm cutting my boards to length. I need two of them that will be 30 inches. That'll be my side panels. And then of course I'm going to need two that will be 60 inches long for my top and bottom. And I'm going to be using the um, rabbit joints to be able to increase the strength of the joints. To make this cross cut, I'm using my circular saw by Tack Life. Now this has the laser on it that makes it where it's very, very accurate. Plus I have the dust control on here, so it virtually has no dust. I really like this, and this has been a great addition to my shop. I'm also going to put a link in the description. Should you choose to purchase this, it'll be available right there for you. To be able to make the rabbit joints, I'm just using the table saw and cutting those in. I set the depth for 3 eighths of an inch, and then I just cut it to 3 quarters of an inch to be able to accept the plywood. Nothing fancy here. Now I want to give you a close up to be able to let you see exactly what that looks like with a scrap piece of wood that's 3 quarters of an inch. 
it's time to be able to go ahead and assemble this cabinet. And to do that, I'm using glue on all of the joints. And I'm using a 16 gauge nail that's actually two inches long. That's overkill. Normally I would use an 18 gauge inch and a quarter nail, but that gun is loaned out right now to my son. So this is the only one that I have that will work. So that is what I'm using. So don't be surprised when you see this gun in the camera. It's a lot larger than what you normally would be using for this type of cabinet. So with a two inch long nail and it's three quarter inch material, you have to be very careful because if you're misaligned this, then you're going to shoot that nail out the side and that's certainly not what you want to have happen. So you have to be very careful with this and of course from the safety standpoint keep the fingers out of the way. Now again normally this would be an inch and a quarter nail that would be an 18 gauge. Now that the box is completely assembled I want to check for square. So you cross the tape measure from the opposite corner down to this corner and you measure that and then you switch and do the exact same thing on the other corner. Those measurements have to be the same and if they are then you know that you're square. With a slight adjustment I've got it and we're ready to move to the next step. Now I'm cutting the back out of half inch plywood and the reason being is I'm going to be using this as a storage area also. Normally a cabinet is either open on the back or has something like an eighth inch plywood but I need the strength and I need to be able to support heavy tools. Thus the half inch plywood back. So now that that's cut, let's go ahead, glue and nail it in place. Now that the panel is in, before I nail it, I want to check for squareness one more time. So again, I measure both corners to make sure that it's exactly the same to verify that it's square and then I'm ready to staple it in. Now I'm using a one inch brad staple to be able to secure this to the back. This staple is actually stronger than the nails. Now the basic cabinet is finished and it's time to go ahead and make the bracket for the hinges. And to do that I'm just going to be using my glue and my tape method to be able to secure this 12 by 14 inch board to the CNC machine. Now this is just regular blue tape and I'm using the Starbond medium uh, glue to be able to hold it in place. Now I've used this many times and I absolutely love this hold down method. And again I'll put a link in the description. Should you choose to be able to purchase the Starbond glue you can do so with a 15% discount. Now using this method it only takes just a small amount of glue. You don't need to overdo and it holds extremely well. By putting the glue on the one side and then taking the uh, accelerator and spraying it on the tape for the other side and then it's just a simple matter of sticking the two together. You hold it down for just a couple of moments and it's secure and you're ready to be able to start to carve. Now I'm using my three axis touch plate that I made and all it is is just simply plugging that in and I'm using the universal G code which is short for UGS and I have a macro that I wrote and you can check out those videos to be able to see how I did it. This just absolutely works fantastic and it only takes just a couple of moments to be able to Z the machine on all three axes. And again, the software that I used to be able to design the um, hinge bracket was the VCarve Pro, but you could also use the VCarve desktop or any number of other software. Now you can see I have the bit exactly on my XY0 position. I have the file loaded. And all I need to be able to do is hit send and I'm ready to be able to carve this. Now because there was two tool paths that I saved in one file, it's going to carve the half inch holes first. Once that is completed, it's immediately going to go and cut out the actual profile of this part. The reason that I love, absolutely love the CNC machine, is that 
it allows you to be able to cut very precise parts and it's repeatable. I can get the exact same part cut for not only this side, but I can repeat it as many times as I want. Now I need four of these all total, but I only had a uh, scrap to be able to do two at a time. So I'm cutting these two, then I'll put another piece on and cut the other two. Now this only took about 20 minutes, 21 minutes to be able to carve. Not bad. Now, how is it for being able to remove that glue and tape method? It comes up actually quite easy. But you can see just how well that it holds. So if you've never tried the glue and tape method, I certainly recommend it. This is a great little trick to be able to use. And you don't have to worry about clamps getting in the way. And it holds extremely well. Now this is actually the top of the cabinet. And that bracket actually has to extend about three quarters of an inch. So there's wood underneath there to be able to provide that spacing. Also, you know another piece of wood that's in the back there. That's one of those revisions that I decided to do. I wanted to pull this bracket up about two inches because it was based on some tools that I want to be able to put on that back uh, panel. And I needed that extra space. So I just shifted this bracket forward Put that two inch spacer in there and it worked just fine. Now everything's been removed. This is my blank wall now and this is where that new cabinet is going to go right into this area. Now I'm having to do this by myself so I'm just going to measure out exactly where I want this cabinet to be positioned. Then I'm going to grab the level. I'm going to put a level line right on the wall and then I'll put in a little nailer little strip of wood to be able to hold that cabinet. This is like having a extra set of hands in the shop when you don't have any. By putting this on there the cabinet will be able to rest right on this strip of wood and that will take the weight off of it for me so I can screw the cabinet to the wall. Now this is probably the hardest part of the entire cabinet build. It's been able to get this up on the wall and lift it. It's not exactly light and I'm not as strong as I used to be. But that little nailer strip, that piece of wood, did its job and it's holding it now. And now I can slide it and position this cabinet exactly where I want it and screw it to the wall. Now it's beginning to be easy again. Now the other thing I want to point out to you, yes, I did mark the stud location so I know exactly where to drill the screws and put those into the wall. The next step is to build the vertical panels. To be able to make the hinge, I'll just use a three quarter inch piece of plywood and this is about two inches wide. To be able to make this radius at the end, I'm just using a large socket to be able to mark it out and that's good enough for what I could do. Now, could I have done this on the CNC machine? Absolutely. But actually for this operation, it's actually quicker to be able to do it this way. I set stop box in place to be able to drill the half inch holes to accept the dowel rods. Again, this is quick and easy and it makes it where I can be repeatable and have an exact cut every single time. Over at the bandsaw, I just cut that radius and I'm cutting on the outside of the line because next I'm going to take it over to the sander and just sand that radius smooth and I'll be ready to put the dowel pins in place. Down at the table saw, I'll go ahead and set up a stop block and cut each of the dowel pins. I'm using a pencil to be able to hold it in place so that it makes sure that it's a safe cut. Got to keep the fingers out of the way. And this is the easiest way to do it using a pencil because that eraser actually gives a very good secure grip onto that dowel rod. Now that the dowel rods are all cut, it's time to go ahead and glue them into position. I cut each of them so that the dowel pins would actually slide all the way through the three quarter inch plywood and be flush with the top of it. This is one of the pins that go on the bottom and that's a half inch that will stick into that half inch piece of plywood. The top pin is actually longer. The top pin is my three quarter inch that goes through the plywood plus five eighths of an inch plus a half inch that goes through that top bracket. 
at the router table, I just go ahead and cut a shallow dado on all of the uh, hinge pins so that I can put the plywood vertical panels in place. I put glue into the dado and start to assemble everything and this is a nice tight fit and that's what I was looking for. Once it's all secured then I'll just go ahead and pin it with the 18 gauge 1 inch staple. Now it's time to see if it works. I did a lot of math, a lot of calculation and it's time to see if the panel works and it does. It slips right in through that top pin and it slides right over to my bottom pin and that works perfectly. It's nice when the job comes together and everything works. So I'm just going to go ahead and put all the panels in now. And the biggest decision is where to put all the tools on which vertical panel. I think that's going to be the hardest part. So here's a look with all the vertical panels in. All of these open up really nice and easy and that's going to provide just tons of storage space. These open up equally as well and it shows and exposes that back wall where I can put all the different tools in. So I absolutely love it. Last step is to figure out what kind of doors I'm going to put onto this cabinet. Now the doors, yeah, they went through some major changes. Originally, my only thought was I was going to make a flat panel with the uh, dry erase board in it, and that would be all. But I realized on the first vertical panels inside the cabinet, there were some specific tools that I wanted to put there that I use all the time. And those were going to be too wide to be able to fit in there and have a flat panel door. So, design change. These boards are actually three and a quarter inches wide, and that's going to give me the depth that I need. So I have them all cut. I have the rabbit joints in here. I've got the glue, and I'm just going to nail them into position. The face frame is made just like a normal cabinet door would with the tongue and groove. I have the tongue here. I have the groove in it. That will accept the dry erase board, and when I put the glue on it, these two pieces will be able to slide together and then I'll put in the dry erase board and then nail this onto the other frame that's three and a quarter inches thick and that will make my door. The bottom part of my door frame is already nailed and glued together. Now it's time to put the face frame on. I'm just using the glue and assembling this like I normally would do a cabinet door and this will get nailed onto this other part, making one complete unit. Now I'll put this face frame on all three sides. That fourth side needs to stay open so that I can go ahead and put in my dry erase board and then I'll put that last fourth piece in position and nail it in. Now once this was all finished, I decided to use the piano hinges to be able to secure this to the cabinet. I had thought about other types of hinges, but I think the piano hinge works the best to be able to support the weight that's going to be on these doors. So now for the fun part. Let's see how much space that we actually get. Now this cabinet is actually 30 inches by 60 inches. So 30 inches by 60 inches is going to be 1,800 square inches. To be able to convert that into square feet, all you need to do is divide that by 144. Reason being 12 times 12, meaning 12 inches times 12 inches is going to be 144. So if I divide that out, what do I get? 12.5. So the back wall, I have 12.5 square feet. Now those panels that I just showed you, there's four on each side. So that's eight panels. Now, what is the size of those panels? Well, 
Those panels are 22 and a half inches by the 25.5. And there's eight of them. But the other thing that you've got to consideration is that they are two-sided. So I take this number and I have to multiply it by two. And when I multiply that out, get 9,180 inches. So if I take that 9,180 square inches, and let's divide it by 144. So the 9,180 divided by 144, so that gives me 63 63.75 square feet. That's a lot of storage area. Now I also have the front and the back of this door. So that's another 30 by 60 space. So that's 30 by 60 times two, both sides. So that's gonna give you a total of 3,600. Thirty six hundred square inches and with thirty six hundred square inches if we do the same thing that's going to give you 25 feet so if I add up the square feet now of these three sections I get 101 0.25 square feet and there's actually more than that because inside of there I can use the shelf to be able to put product on as you saw the drills so that is a useful space also but we're not even going to count that so now then to be able to see how many times the storage space let's take that 12.5 that we started with and divided by our 101.25 And that's going to give you over eight times that is going to give you over eight times the storage space. That is a fantastic use of the wall space. And I'm so excited about this. I started filling up the cabinet, still gathering up tools from all over the shop to be able to put into this cabinet. And just so you know, on the face of this cabinet where the dry erase board is, you could display tools as well. I chose to utilize this space for my dry erase board so I can continue with future classes that I am planning for this uh, channel. I also want to note that I can use the side of this cabinet for storage as well as the top of this cabinet to be able to store even more product, tools, and material. I want to thank everyone for watching the video today and I'm would certainly hope that you will subscribe to the channel and push that little notification bell so that you'll be notified on all of the different videos. Until next time, have a good day.